But it's coffee time. Coffee. So do... Coffee. It's the bikini coffee time. <laughs> I don't even mean to say it, though. It's okay. Okay, All right. so are you... Do we need an intro? Is that super noisy in the background? <laughs> Can you make sure that you get that? Oh, that this okay. In there. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Back at it again. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Camille Perriott here. Sarah Lyon. Another episode of The Bikini Show. And look where we are at. Just a bar. A bar. <laughs> no, we are at a phenomenal place in Santa Cruz, California. So I'm as happy as can be to be in California. Mm -hmm. Chicago's it's a little It's great chilly. to have you out here. Yeah, it's been great. And yesterday we had a, should we talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about okay. yesterday. Yesterday was phenomenal. So we had I a great. Just that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what happened yesterday? Oh should yeah. We talk about that. <laughs> Uh, well, yesterday we had an event at Santa Cruz Power Fitness, and awesome. we had we there the there was uh, we had Sandy Williamson, we had mm -hmm. Maximum Muscle Report, we had uh, just you know Kim Odo, Whitney Jones, Brianna Ansley, Angelica Texture. We had there was so the many who's people who's. there. Um, you know, at one point I was looking around and like it was just mind blowing, and it it's was. so great to have everyone to get. It's almost like it's like team building yeah. on a non-team sport. <laughs> it you know? is. You know, I think a lot of people have this just idea that a lot of the industry is like out for each other or they're not friends and this team doesn't interact with this team. And that was the cool part about yesterday is you had, you know, Team Zero Gravity, Ryan Benson training underground athletes, George Brown, you know, yeah. like that does it. That's not supposed to happen, but it does because everyone's confident in their choices within the industry, if you will. So it doesn't matter to interact and mingle with, you know, this group over here and this group over here. It what is what makes it a whole little family, it's yeah. like a bodybuilding family. And that's why I was saying to you too, the timing of it was so awesome because- No one had any shows. Ooh. All the coaches were on their downtime. Yes. So, I mean, it's January. And people but haven't seen each other. Yeah, you know? it's, like, it's, a, it's a way to motivate um, the NPC mm -hmm. for their seasons. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there was just so much gone over and so much information that honestly, if people didn't come, like you missed out on <laughs> interacting with probably some of your favorite athletes, training with your favorite athletes, training amongst them. Totally. Like how cool. Who, when is there ever another opportunity to do that? And I truly cannot think of one off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. Get like a take thing for us. I'll just keep doing like that. Take 56. <laughs> All right, so Kyle. So Sarah. Uh, okay, so actually, we, we, we kind of discussed earlier, uh, wellness. So, yeah. kicks off MPC show, starts this weekend at the LA Fit Expo, Muscle mm -hmm. Contest. Are there any bikini pros that you guys can see jumping into the wellness division? I absolutely think there are. I can name a, I can name a few that I think would crush the wellness division. Mm -hmm. um, no one's really announced that they have that they're Bait making that that want that switch yet. Yeah, and I I'm smiling because I did a sit down interview with Angelica yesterday, and I had to ask, you know, a Brazilian native, a girl who is curvy, who has the muscle that she's very borderline. She could really go either way you know there's there's quite a few girls I mean I feel like there's a lot that are borderline that you can either make the decision to stay dieted down and you know starve <laughs> train differently or you can you know fuel and, and eat more more than likely and and go ahead and make that switch and, yeah. and add that muscle I mean I think it'll be interesting. I think a lot of girls are, I could even say personally, I think it can be overwhelming to look at the well-known wellness pros in Brazil and out of South America because they are so muscular. I think there might be a lot of people that see that. And although their physiques look phenomenal, I think it almost leaves that hesitation 
for, yeah. oh, well, they're really muscular. They oh, are um, really muscular, really muscular, really conditioned. But there are some pros that I think that um, it would really complement them. Like yeah. uh, one who's pregnant right now, not competing, but I reached out to her and I was like, I'm like this would be like awesome for you. Yeah. Um, Marissa mm. Rivero. Oh, yeah. So she has, yes, she, you know, and, and I've talked to Marissa about her preps in the past. She hasn't competed in a while, mm-hmm. but and she's always had a hard prep. She, she has to just, you know, it's the amount of cardio these girls have to do to get their, their like the muscularity so. down. Um, it's so much. And yeah. that's what the whole division is here for. Right. So like someone like Marissa would kill it. She has those Absolutely. big glutes. She has those legs. Um, that small waist, the smaller, you know, upper body, she would crush it. Um, I think another one who could do really, really well if she let, uh, just would it give her a chance to allow her legs to grow. Uh-huh. Um, Frida Paulson. Yes. She yeah. could do really, I really, really well too. Be really good that. And I think it would be interesting to see her make that jump because she's so tall. A lot of the wellness girls that I've seen, um, that are already established are on the shorter end. And yeah. it makes sense if you, you know, if you think about it just because of how long it takes to add that muscle. And, and when you're shorter, you just simply have shorter muscle bellies, you know, right. like I'm five, nine. So my quad muscle is this long compared to someone who's five foot two. It's this long and obviously not right. actually that length, but it's shorter. So you're more compacted, easier to add the muscle or easier to add it more quickly. Um, so I think that it'll be interesting to see how tall a good wellness pro ends up being. Yeah, that's a really good point. I can't think of anyone who's super tall yeah. that would be able to fit that. Yeah, because I mean, I catcher. know how long it took me to add the muscle just for the bikini division. Whew. And, you know, I mean. It's a long. It's a journey. It, it's a marathon. It is. And I think that's, you know, that is a whole mm-hmm. other yeah. show. Right. The patience and time how long it takes to put on muscle. Yeah, but let's talk about that. So we're in an, uh, an age where people want to... to when be there immediately now. and we talked about Daraja. yeah this is a girl who's been competing for a year she's the exception well that's what i'm saying so there are people that the exception exists but the, what i think people need to understand is like that's not normal right yeah. and so, well and even though uh Daraja, uh-huh. you know who is a new pro uh-huh. who's you know she in our eyes we see like oh this girl just kind of came out of nowhere and is just crushing it well, she probably has a very athletic background. You know, even though she's only been competing for a year, she probably has been playing sports her whole life and has that foundation. Good genetics. There's just so many things that play into that. And I think that with social media, it's just hard because it's so easy to only pay attention to the exceptions. Yeah. You know, and then you're not taking into consideration maybe the girls that are busting their butts right now and we're not going to figure it fine find out about them for another couple of years. Right. And that's okay. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> well, that should be kind of what's expected is like the, the expect the expectation shouldn't be, I'm going to go do one show, qualify for nationals, win a national show, turn around and win pros or be a pro. Yeah. It's just, it's just not the norm. And it, it's frustrating, especially for myself as a coach, you know, you, I have girls that have never even competed before. Hey, I want to be pro. And you know, oh yeah, I don't mean to giggle at them, but I'm just like, okay, you know, well, let's start with show number one. <laughs> have you been to a show before? Oh, right. I mean, I can't tell you how many girls say that they want to be pro and they've never even been to a show and that you just kind of, well, that is like, why do you want to be a, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. They and see the end result. And I think that at the end of the day, those people who are set on the instant gratification and the now, 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 they end up weeding themselves out. Right. Because they don't stick They're, around. And the, the, the ones who are the, the successful pros who have stayed in the sport for a long time. They're there because they love it. They love it. Yes. And regardless of placings, they're not doing it for a certain status. They're doing mm-hmm. it because their first, the first reason that got them to that point mm-hmm. was because they liked to work out and they right. liked to, and then, and then competing became almost like a second thing. Right. Um, but yes, when, when the goal is like, I want to become a bikini pro mm-hmm. and I've never, I've never competed before, or I just started working out. Yeah. Like you have, there's so much time mm-hmm. and a lot of times they don't understand that. So they right. want that instant gratification now, now, now. Yeah. It's all, yeah. I think it's also a generational thing. Yeah, totally. You, you know, know, it's just, 
yeah, I mean, I'm a millennial, but still it is, you know, it, I mean, even I could say for myself, it, it was one of those things that it took time to, well, no, actually, never mind. It was not one of those instant people. I, like, I, I got never, it like that. Right. I never, <laughs> never, ever said that. And maybe Mandis would disagree with that one, but I don't think I've ever been the you know, oh, I didn't get it, so I'm not going to do it. I mean, there's plenty of shows that I was last call-outs. There's plenty of shows that I was first call-outs. It's just one of those things that not every day is your day. And when you don't understand that, that is what is going to hurt you. Because right. I've seen girls be in the last call-out, and then I've seen them win their pro card the next show. It happens. Oh, yeah. And then the ones that get the last call-out and are so butthurt that they got last call-out and they can't see past that, they can't see that it just wasn't their day, then they might not even go on to compete. And then next thing you know, they're regretting it a year down the line, realizing, oh, well, maybe if I would have just done a couple more, if maybe, you know, it just wasn't the look that they were looking for that day. Yeah. It, it's a common thing. And not understanding that, um, not understanding that that's just a part of the sport is, you know, it just, it can hurt you. It can hurt you because it's a mental sport. Right. So when you you're be, mentally you talking be. yourself out of it, Right, Already. you need to be driven and self motivated. Yeah, yeah, disciplined. Yeah, self disciplined. I think. So something that you just mentioned, I, I think, is is for people who don't really know the ins and outs of bikini, which arguably there are going to be a lot of people who don't. Um, there are probably even a lot of pros who still don't. Can you talk a little bit about when it comes to judging how we can look at one show and a girl who is really hard and peeled wins that show so and then the next show that person can be last call outs because they're looking for a softer look like can you kind of explain a little bit why that happens mm -hmm. or like just so people can understand more of like it's not really like you might look the best you've ever looked but that might not be the look the judges are looking for that day it's like that's i think it's the only division i can think of that that's how it yeah. works i do too there's not so much of a cut and dry, even like even Sandy said yesterday, you know, men's bodybuilding. I know I'm looking for the hardest. I know I'm looking for one of the driest, the most conditioned um, bikini. It's the whole package. It's the whole package. I think it also comes down to a who's on your panel, right? You got to know your panel. You yeah. don't like I you have to select. You know, there's certain judges that like a certain look over another sure. look. And so being, you know, being selective for your physique and what you can bring mm -hmm. to match their preference. Mm -hmm. And then also who shows up. It comes down, it, a big part of it is how you, you know, how, what you bring to the stage that day. But it's also who shows up and then, then yeah. you're being compared against them. The judges judge what's in front of them. So if the majority of a lineup is a more muscular lineup you're probably going to see a more muscular girl win. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't want that as the standard for the bikini division, if 90% of the lineup is that, they yeah. have to go with what's in front of them. Right. And then you are going to have shows that it's going to be softer, more petite, if you will. And again, if that is the majority, they're going to judge what's in front of them. So, And it comes down to personal preference for a lot of them. And that's yeah. what they, you know, it's... and and. That is part of why the bikini division, I think, is so hard to judge. Mm -hmm. And it can be there. That's also why you can see a top five, like a top five at the Olympia was so every body type was totally different. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, comes down to personal preference a little bit, too. Different. But at the same time, if you look at the, the top five at the Olympia, they all have very similar shapes to them. They all, you know especially I'm blessed enough that, you know, with maximum muscle report, I get to sit pretty much right behind the judges, you know, 30 plus weekends a year. So yeah. I'm seeing what's being called out at regional shows across the country. I'm seeing what's called out in the first call at the Arnold at the Olympia. And it, it's really opened my eyes to bikini. Yes. is super subjective, but I think that there is a very fair standard um, and especially being able to talk with a lot of the judges as you do as well you get to have that inside look and inside perspective yeah. of what they're actually looking at. Like I'll totally. never forget when I showed one of my athletes to one of the judges after a national show and she took fourth there. And the first thing he did was zoom in on her upper lateral glutes. And he was like, you know, it's just not full enough there. And her waist could look smaller. I'm looking right up there and how the shape looks. Yeah. And right then and there I was like, 
oh, okay. And it just totally opened up my eyes to how it's so much more of the balance from the shoulder cap to the lateral glutes yeah. and then how small the waist looks there. And it looks because it's not that you have to have a 20 inch waist. It's, it's the, it's arch, the illusion. It's the projection of the glutes. Totally. Yeah. Totally. How you pose. Yeah. How you present your package in general. Is but, that the question? Well, if, how someone would change their physique and their placing from one week to another um, you know, that can be so that can be as simple as changing your judging panel changing to changing, changing your <laughs> changing the lineup. Those are two big things. And I mean, but you can also change your body drastically. Uh, water retention, you know, that's, at that point, color. within it, a week, you're mainly adjusting, manipulating right. water. Um, or, or filling out, right. you know, eating well, and more. think about, I mean, I'm sure you could even give us a more inside perspective on the fact of when, if you've competed at a couple different shows, then you're, you know, you kind of know what the stage lighting is like, you know, totally. what the background looks like. So That's huge. if you know that your backdrop's red, you're probably not going to pick a red suit for that right. show. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, when you actually just think it through and I think that then leads into, do you have a well-versed coach that knows what they're talking about, that knows what, what the different stages are like, that knows what the, a better fit may be for you for that show. Right. You know, it, it, that's interesting because the, the stage lighting Can was something that, us? but the stage lighting was something I'd never even thought about until like a couple of years ago. Even when the, you know, when it, when, when the stage lighting is really dark, you know, it can make you look so much harder. And so, you know, those, that, that, that is, that, that's when like a good coach and being well educated within your different shows to select mm -hmm. from, like show selection is so important. Yeah. Also, because you is. can't control certain things like, okay, this, this particular show has really dark stage, stage mm -hmm. lighting. I might get, you know, mm -hmm. look a certain not, way and right. it's not, not ideal. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think when, when you actually take those things into consideration, you're just setting yourself up for, a, you know, a, a better shot, if you will. Yeah. Um, but knowing those things, yeah, like you said, makes a huge difference. If you know that the judges are literally right in front of the stage, you better be 100% conditioned. Whereas if, you know, you're at the New York Pro, you might be able to get away with a hair less conditioning just because there's a much bigger gap in between the stage and the judges. Right. You know, right so they're, there. yeah, they're, they're not right underneath you looking mm -hmm. at every little detail. They're from farther away. So, you know, like any eyesight, you know, it looks different up close. Yeah. Things look different up close. Yeah. But it's exciting when you, and I think a lot of people, a lot of pros, well, you know, they might start their, their start their run, mm -hmm. you know, not ideal. And I think most also continue to get more conditioned yeah. and improve. And so their placing is doing, it's not uncommon to see someone, you know, improve and finally get that win yeah. or go from a win and just get smoke out of the water. I think that there's also, also a certain point when you get that win, mm -hmm. hold it. Yeah. Like, Cause you're kind of the, I think the worst is when you have like an awesome, an awesome ranking mm -hmm. and then you get that you know then your second your last yeah. show was like not second call out right. like you want you want to be as good as your you know right your last yeah. right right and, and to you know pick your show strategically yes if you just want to show you know on hold the pro out, side yeah then, hold out for a bigger one right and then just wait you know if, if that show qualified you for the o yeah, then then give your body the time to rest yeah, and then have a great prep going into the Olympia. I don't for, I mean, even like if you look at the men's physique division, I'm, I'm going to not say the name cause I don't know a hundred per I'm, I think I'm right, but I don't want to say it and be wrong. Um, but there was a, a men's physique pro last year that was well ahead in points. Well ahead in points. He had no need to well, keep let's talk competing. about Ashley Keep competing. Right. So you're, you're like, she doesn't even, actually doesn't even need to compete because she's already Olympia, could just yeah. jump into any Olympia. Yeah. And that's one thing that like, I, I'm a fan of her physique. Yeah. She has, she can win uh -huh. any show she goes into, uh -huh. but I, I was, I almost, I personally feel that jumping into some of the, I know she was trying to understand her, her prep and getting mm -hmm. her conditioning down and dialed, but 
picking these shows that are for her, in my opinion, were maybe kind of small. Yeah. Pick, you know, s- compete in shows that are bigger. Competitive. And, you know, and would her, way. would she have reclaimed her title if she just went into Olympia, boom, with a vengeance? Yeah. Rather than doing all these smaller shows. Yeah. You know? And I think, too, though, um, you know, I, I did a sit down interview with Ashley actually at last year's Arnold Classic. Um, it, it's a, good interview check it out on maximum muscle report um you know with that she kind of broke down why she mm-hmm. was doing that and it was more of hey i haven't been on stage in a long time yeah like i gotta get my feet wet well. now in regards to what show she picked yeah, yeah i agree with you you know or, challenge or the new york bit, the new york or pittsburgh yeah. you know, and, and i think that there's a lot of shows that athletes pick because of the convenience of it too yeah you know whether their coach lives there or that they know that the venue's connected to a hotel yeah um you know they know they don't have to be outside i think i mean personally even when i'm going through shows with my athletes i i always like to set them up for the least stressful show possible yeah so if I know that, you know, you got to be outside in 100 degree weather in July and you have to go from the host hotel to the actual venue right. in a tan hair makeup. Right. I'm probably not going to say, yeah, that's my first choice for you. Right. You know, it, it's all about convenience oh. and athletes have so many options nowadays. Um, I think those little details make such a big difference for when they pick shows. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. But I I. I that's one thing that I was like last well, year. Well, I mean, someone could say that about you, though. True. You, I mean, I remember when I saw you at the Hurricane Pro, and I was like, "Why is she here? Yeah. Why is she doing this show?" Touche. What a boot. Well, that's when we were on the points. We were yeah. trying to get points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and that's the best way to do it, too. Fresh you, out to the Olympia, compete in the fall. Yeah. I feel like a lot of girls don't compete in the fall, and they wait for next year. And I'm like, why? This counts towards next year? What? The girls, you, for example, Marcia, you guys racked up all those points competing after the Olympia. When it was all smart. Those other girls, absolutely. It was smart. I did absolutely. it right Strategic. before, right, before, oh, right afterwards. I was able to kick my heels up right and take your time take some time Enjoy off rather than stressing trying yep. to get those last minute points um and i did the same thing going through this year i was like all right let's do this you know show right before olympia see what happens see if i'm on point mm-hmm. boom and it it worked but prior p- preparation prevents piss poor performance <laughs> mandis <laughs> mandis buckle everyone <laughs> So one last quick quick uh, topic, and then we'll wrap this up. With the expansion of the IFBB NPC to becoming so much more international, you talked about show selection. People want to travel. What are some thoughts with girls trying to do international shows over doing something that's more convenient or strategic for... I think it's like what I just said, prior preparation. You know, if you want to... I think, uh, first off, it's amazing what the IFBB Pro League has done expanding worldwide and internationally. I think all the athletes are super grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm grateful for it with Maximum Muscle Report being able to travel internationally and cover different shows and see how the shows work um, everywhere else in the world. But... If you know you're going to, you know, be on a 20 hour flight to Australia, then get in early enough, get in early enough that your body can reset. You can get onto a regular time schedule. You can get rid of the extra water because everyone holds water on planes. Mm -hmm. It's just our body's natural defense mechanism to, you know, that, that air pressure. So if you plan it, I don't, I think that it's great. Um, in regards to, you know, the competition and the judging, I, I'm not, you know, I can't speak on that yet. <laughs> well, it, but, it, it also allows you to visit really cool places. Absolutely. I mean, you, you can, you can, most of us have traveled to places that we would have never been to right. unless it was for the sport. Yeah. Um, and you're seeing a lot of athletes that are, it, it's just bringing, you know, when you would see the, the roster on certain, you know, shows or the Arnold or Olympia the U- USA was a dominant country. Absolutely. Now it's almost like it's getting yeah. to be more 50-50. I mean, even like the Pittsburgh Pro last year when Priscilla Linebacker came and won the Pittsburgh Pro and I literally was sitting right there and I was like, who is she? 
I've never heard of this girl, you know, and it was, she's from Sweden, you know, right. and it, it's awesome though to see. And, and I'm sure a lot of the athletes too, especially, I'm sure you could tell us more about it. You've made friends from all over the world because oh, of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Traveling, you know, like the Arnold's, I did the Arnold's Australia in 2016, I think. Um, it was a while ago, but it was a long flight mm -hmm. that, and that, you know, the, the time change, the sleep deprivation, yeah. it takes, it's, it's, it's a totally different ball game. Yeah. Traveling to shows that are really far away. It's like, it's like the sport has, it's like, it's like extreme sports. Yes. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Dieting on a plane and doing peak week and water loading. Compression and, shorts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's uh, amazing, though. If that answers the question, I don't know if that answered it. Well, <laughs> we have finished our cups of coffee. Oh, you did? The bar's getting full behind us. She did. I did. And this wraps up this episode of B The Bikini Show. The Bikini Show. And we'll keep bringing you guys new, interesting, different topics, small conversations, things that you can hear from a very well veteran athlete. I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. You know, top 10 Arnold, top 10 Olympian. And then you have myself, who is going to give you more of a perspective from the other side of the stage, right behind the judges. And Watching a coach's and, standpoint yeah. and a competitor as well. Yeah. And we'll be bringing on Costume. some really some fun interviews with you know, other athletes yeah. and hearing about their journey, asking them questions that maybe all of us are wanting to ask and don't get the haven't opportunity yet. to. So yeah. um, stay tuned for more to come, but we're excited to bring some fun content to you guys. Definitely. Until next time, Sarah Lyon, Camille Perriott, we're out. <laughs> cool. <laughs>